1991, they almost exploded onto the toy scene. Today, we're going to take a look at the unproduced G.I. Joe Toxic Time Bombs. For those who are unaware, the G.I. Joe Eco Warriors toy line didn't actually start off with a water squirting gimmick. If you will listen to the Joe Declassified podcast that's all about Eco Warriors and the Arbco playset and was currently reposted to 3djoes.com, you'll find that there are a lot more details to this. Primarily, the big change was that instead of using water, originally the Eco Warriors were going to use sludge. And you may think that sludge is simply the exact same thing as the retro mutagen ooze from the Ninja Turtle line, the ectoplasm from the Ghostbusters line, or the slime, like from the slime pit in the Masters of the Universe line. Because G.I. Joe didn't really have slime. But it actually was that, but with a twist. Because the G.I. Joe slime was also going to include small plastic chunks that would have glowed in the dark. And that glow in the dark plastic chunk gimmick would have played into some things. And one of those things is these toxic time bombs that were not released. Originally the toxic time bombs were supposed to retail for $5.99 and come out in the first section of Eco Warriors along with the septic tank, flint, ozone, clean sweep, Toxo Viper, Cesspool, and Sludge Viper. All those were supposed to come out at the same time. However, they got pushed back and then just never ended up being released at all. A figure cost at the time about $2.50, but an Eco Warrior was about $4. So the Toxic Time Bomb costs roughly two figures. And the basic gimmick was that you would have an outer shell, you would wind it, and, of course, after a time, that's where they get the time in their name, it would explode, and then a vehicle would be shot out, and whenever the vehicle came out, it would dispense sludge, or plasma tox, as it was sometimes called in the comic book, as well as in the commercial. But, of course, these didn't happen. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first one, which is Toxo... Toxic Time Bomb, I should say, and that's the other thing. I'm just calling these Toxic Time Bomb number one and number two. Thanks to Tanner Dable, who posted those to yojo.com. We do have some sketches of those from their earlier years, uh, but we unfortunately don't have specific names for these. I've never come across any kind of name other than Toxic Time Bomb, and they are denoted as number one and number two. So, just because it would make sense, let's first take a look at number one. This toxic time bomb is a crate that explodes to reveal a bucket vehicle. Now, I probably should note that whenever I received this, um, it was actually missing one of the front wheels. But as noted on the sculpt input sheet for both toxic time bombs, the wheels are actually the same between the two of them. And as bad luck would have it, the wheel actually fell off on Toxic Time Bomb number two while I was taking pictures. So some of the pictures that you'll see for Toxic Time Bomb number one actually show it with all of its wheels, but unfortunately, I am missing one of the front wheels. If you have that front wheel, contact me. Uh, but let's take a look. Um, it does have a winding mechanism. I guess you can kind of think of these things as being for right-handed kids. So if this is the Toxic Time Bomb, they would be holding it like this, and so therefore this is the front of the box. And the top of the box, we, we know exactly where that is because it's, it's labeled. And essentially a kid would wind this. I'm not going to do that because this is resin and it does spin, but I don't want to, I don't want to turn it too rigorously. And then it would explode, and there is detailing inside. And I think that it's interesting to note that it looks like the detailing permits you to have the bucket either in the up or down position. It's a little bit, the sculpting in there is a little strange. I don't know how much of this is finalized. And there are a couple of huge screws holding it together that I think probably would have been replaced whenever engineering would have finished things out. You can kind of see that this bucket vehicle, it doesn't dump very easily, so I don't know how well the mechanism would have worked 
to retain the sludge while inside the crate and then to dump it out. But one thing I can say for certain, this isn't a water squirter and I don't really see a way that they would have converted this into the water squirting gimmick of the later Eco Warriors that actually did end up coming out. So I think that maybe one of the reasons why these never saw the light of day is the fact that they just couldn't convert them to the existing gimmick of the Eco Warriors. That's going to be my best guess. I don't know. It could have been a costing decision. It could have been any of a number of things. They definitely would have cost certainly more than tooling up, say, the Eco Striker or the Septic Tank that were primarily based on existing vehicles. But, uh, and they would have cost something also because of the winding mechanism in them. So maybe they just, for a number of reasons, didn't get released. And here is time bomb number two. This one is a waste tank that explodes into a catapult vehicle. And something that's probably worth noting about these is that the decals on them are a mixture of existing decals from previous sets, along with some paper decals. And I really like this one a lot because how often do you get to see Arbco actually written on a G.I. Joe toy? And this says Arbco Chemical Company, so very cool. And in a lot of ways, this one may have been the superior one to have on hand because I could just really see this thing sitting outside of the Toxo lab and just looking like scenery for a while. And the other one's nice, but um, it looks like it more belongs in somewhere in a warehouse. And this one again is a right-handed mechanism, so it winds on this side and uh, that would make this the front of it. And we will just open this up carefully. There's detailing on that one as well. And you can kind of see that there's a large pin that steadies the two halves together. I do wonder how much tweaking would have happened with this had they been produced. And this vehicle actually looks a little more sleek. There's actually a cap on here that I assume would be launched off, or maybe that's where you kind of were supposed to, to gloop some of your sludge in there and just kind of smoosh it onto the top of the catapult. So not only would it come out catapulting sludge, but also this little piece of something. But hey, it's a toxic time bomb. It's all about a one and done explosion, and that's how Cobra designed it, or Destro designed it. Uh, who, who knows who's designing this eco stuff? It may have been Cesspool's company. I'm not really sure. But either way, I'm, I'm happy to be able to show these to everybody today because I think that it's some of the unsung uh, parts of G.I. Joe. One of the things that we don't really see a lot, it was mentioned, but actually seeing the 3D models and seeing everything in color really brings to light what, exactly what these were going to be. And... I think that I really would have enjoyed having these. I definitely would not have um, seen them as just something that was a vehicle. They're almost a little bit in between because it is noted that they are a robot of some kind. I don't know. Uh, so were the Battlefield robots, I suppose. So, Philip, you showed us the handmade septic tank from the G.I. Joe commercials a while back. What is your take on the toxic time bombs? Yeah, well, we know how much I love my Cobra Toxic. Wait. No, Toxic's not right. My Cobra Septic Tank. <laughs> and yes, I do have a hand-mocked-up one that's from the live-action commercials. Uh, please find that video on a previous talking point and check it out. It's a really cool item. Uh, but onto these really cool items, the Toxic Time Bombs. Uh, you did mention the pricing is kind of actually based off a proposed pricing that Kirk Bozigian posted online that's uh, maybe not a final pricing sheet, but uh, still the point stands. They probably would have been the cost of about two action figures, and that would have been something that probably would have decreased sales for something that doesn't come with its own figure and can't have a figure really right on the vehicle. Uh, but... I do like the gimmick of it. It is kind of a fun idea of something popping out and then splaying uh, goop everywhere. Um, as a kid, I think that'd be incredibly fun. As an adult, 
I think they probably would have gotten a lot of angry letters and phone calls from parents who had to shampoo their carpets and furniture to get goo stains out of everywhere. And I can see that also kind of working against its release in public. <laughs> um, but onto the uh, containers themselves, you did point out on Toxic Time Bomb number two, the Arbco sticker on there. That is a, a great little reference to uh, one of Cobra's shell companies in the comics. But uh, if you look back on the crate for Toxic Time Bomb number one, you'll see it says to Cobra, Millville, USA. Millville? is a town Cobra took over in the late 90s, early 100s issues of the Marvel comic. It's a city they kind of established as their new home after Springfield was abandoned in the U.S. So there's another callback to the comics right there. And I think it's kind of great that they're showing up in the toys, because at that point you did have the Deke cartoon, but the comic was the, the lifeblood through the entire run, so... It is nice to see that get some acknowledgement more in the show, <laughs> in the toys. Uh, so uh, overall, pretty fun. And uh, I kind of am sad we didn't get these to be in our hands, but it is nice that they exist at least in some form that we're able to show it off. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, Philip and I post similar videos. Just please go ahead and clip and save our channel by clicking subscribe below. Thanks and have a good day. Thanks for watching this episode of Articulated Points. We hope you enjoyed it. And we'd appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to learn more about some of the toys featured in this episode or want to follow us on social media, links are in the description below this video. So this one has the winding mechanism again for kids with right hand who are right-handed. Um, yeah, for kids with right hands. <sighs> Hopefully that's most kids. What kind of toxic stuff is in these toys?